Shalom, Michael here, Street Corner Ministering, Street Corner Witnessing Turf. Barucata Yorobabelene, Shalom, Michael here, Street Corner Witnessing Turf, Prescott, Arizona, the parking garage. Uh, may Yorobabe Baruch you and Pasakayim, Pasako Zen, and Pasako Ka. Open your hearts, minds, ears, and eyes to what I'm about to say is that trying to make this quick. So <clears throat> Moses, uh, you know, he didn't own anything, uh, basically. He brought the children out of uh, Egypt with uh, wages and silver and gold and gems and stones and clothes and whatever uh, contribute. They pillaged the wealth of, of Egypt. And so he brought him to the desert where he just wanted to marry him back to himself. But Moses himself, basically, as the text resides, he was in the wilderness 40 years, so maybe he didn't have a lot. And then he got a family, and he kind of like separated to his family. But if you want to do an in-depth study, a Jasher and Jubilees give you a little more in-depth study. But Moses, again, not much material wealth upon this earth. And again... Most of the prophets, as it is written, you know, uh, were hated by the worldly wealth. And, uh, you know, they all got some way or another, he got taken to Hashemayim, the heavenly realm, or, you know, Elijah. Uh, Moses also was buried by Hashem, you know, and uh, again, Yeshua, as it is written, he came away from his family wealth, even though maybe the scripture said that they were poor, you know what I mean? But, you know, his cousin was, uh, or uncle was uh, Joseph of Yeremesia or whatever, and uh, he was uh, one of the wealthiest men in all of Israel or all of Jerusalem, uh, supposedly in the metal industry of gold, silver, and copper. Uh, so, my point being is, is the adversary wrestling over the body of Moses and, uh, you know, Michael the Archangel wrestling over, Michael the Archangel and the adversary wrestling over the body of Moses. This is a blessing of a understanding that, you know, the latest upgrade of that model is, is that man himself, earthly man would want to make a monument out of Moses's grave. So the adversary is trying to, you know, get a memorial going on Moses's uh, body uh, to start selling hot dogs and hamburgers and, and all kinds of relics to get people to come there to spend their money on, oh, I've been to the where Moses was buried type site. The same thing with basically Jerusalem and, and all the relics of, you know, the tomb and the Jordan and all these things. When Yeshua is clear, this is all I want you to do. I want you to go spread the good news and love one another. And, you know, Baruch told me this morning that he gave a big utterance about, you know, he's not really observant upon uh, <clears throat> the month of Tisri or Rosh Hashanah. Uh, the beginning of the creation or coming up to Yom Kippur, the day of atonement, that he's just saying, you know, love is the gift. And first Timothy, uh, right in the beginning, I think it's first Timothy one six, uh, says that we're, you know, love is the key. Uh, they're arguing over what, whatever, but love is the key. That's, that's the whole point. So love in Hebrew is when one gives to another. Where I'm at right now is that I've, I'm, I'm like very much around a lot of uh, wealthy materialistic people who like this earth. You know what I mean? Who love, uh, they have spiritual problems and fleshly problems and hardened hearts and all this, but they're convinced that, you know, they're going to try to make, good at building this monument where everybody can come and see and look at me. You know, I got this wonderful place here. You know, look at me. God must be with me, right? That's where I'm at. And so I, if you just read the book of Acts when it starts out, they were selling everything to move the kingdom forward. So I don't see why we can't do that. I don't see why we're having to serve 
the mammon and, and legal liability corporations basically were not to join hands with the wicked. And you know that the legal liability corporations, the evil government, the Jesuits, the Freemasons, the Bilderbergs, uh, secret societies are all earthly realms trying to build some temple, some new building, some new place to live to keep you all defiled and living in these quarters doing nothing that Yeshua told us to do. And you can say, well, Michael, salvation is easy. You just have to believe with your heart and confess with your mouth, and it's done. You can go live in your house, and, and you can eat all the, the whatever you want, and you can get, you know, air conditioning and all these stuffs upon you. I'm telling you, I don't think that's what they were doing. I think they were trying to make the world a better place, and evil, the Book of Martyrs, will tell you that these people that want to build buildings on corners and cities and Babylonian things and and uh, artificial intelligence and all this and robots, they're the ones that want to control you and it's working. You ate, uh, you drank the water, you ate the food, you've done the toothpaste and the deodorant and you're now genetically modified to where you're just thinking you're going to heaven. You just need to know Jesus and uh, it's good to go. And so my point being is, is that you better wake up people because you know, nowhere that I know does it say do worldly things. You're in the world, but not of it. And most people are consumed by thinking they're going to do some kind of, uh, you know, biblical or earthly thing, and they're going to make it to the kingdom. Uh, I'm telling you, it's love, my friends. And, you know, eternal calendar, Yeshua said, I go prepare a place for you if it was not so. Flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom. Ephesians six twelve says it's not a battle of flesh and blood, but a battle of spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. And most people don't even care uh, what's going on. You know, ain't love of this world or anything in it is hatred towards Yudavav Elohim, who is Yeshua. So, you know, I'm just trying to help you wake up. That I see my eyes are open and I see evil ruling everybody, and I see hearts hard. And I see, you know, even if the joy is there, it's not there continually. So it has to be a battle of spiritual wickedness in heavenly places to overcome. So within all that, I, I know I miss a few things, but, uh, you know, I hope you just go ahead and listen. And you actually just start reading your Bible, clicking on the words, and, and get to know your Creator the, the best of our availability today is to know his word and, and click on the original words and find out that, hey, in the first word is the whole book of, of, of the plan of salvation. So he was slain before the foundations of the world. So the, the main point being is get your name written in that book of life, or perhaps it already is. Okay, if it is, then you need to start building treasure in heaven and not this worldly existence of evil ruling the money. And the money shows evil all over it. And I, I just drives me crazy. And, uh, but anyway, you know, Yeshua is dwelling in me. So, may Yerubabe Baruch you, bless you, and may Yeshua fill your everlasting heart. In the Aleph of Dom Shave, Shem Yeshua Mashiach, in the blood of the Lamb of Yeshua, our Mashiach. Uh, I mean, I mean, Shalom.